working hard to achieve four goals at the same time. The first is to make the very best biochar. The second is to use as much of the process energy as possible. The third is to eliminate as many emissions as possible. And the fourth is to make the whole process as profitable as possible for everyone. No matter what biomass we put in, we get out carbon. This is how we really mean to take a bite out of our carbon footprint. Good stuff. These are the retorts. These are uh, the three machines that we use. Um, so these large boxes, those are the individual retorts that the char is actually made in. This one is open for you guys to come and check out a finished load. Um, this was loaded with the strips and like I said, it makes very good char because it is thin and allows air to travel through it. I'm just gonna go ahead and start from beginning to end on a normal day basis of, of us making this biochar. So this is our gasifier and this is where all of our heat comes from and where it starts off. This is the hopper that we load with wood chips and then an auger feeds it into the gasifier and we light it here at the beginning of the day and then we have two fans here one's for primary air which forces air down through the gasifier into the combustion chamber in this door here that's what provides us the initial heat to start heating the wood so at the beginning of the day we light the wood chips through the lighting port and then turn on the primary air and that would start a fire down in the combustion chamber and that heat is going to go down and travel there's two channels underneath these retorts. There's the front channel and the rear channel. So initially we send heat underneath the front channel and then back around um, and we control where that heat goes through these gate valves here. So these are manually open and closed gate valves. And there's one for each retort and then there's also one in the back. So we can send heat straight up the flue through the heat exchanger as well if we need to. But the heat travels and underneath the retort on the front heat channel and it comes back through and then the remaining heat goes up the flue and is captured in uh, the water tanks which are behind this wall which Dan will talk about later on. And so we do that initially until it gets up to about 1000 to 1200 degrees and once we know that that gas is really being combusted at a high enough temperature and then we're going to open up the safety valve um, which allows the gas being produced by the wood in the retort to escape. And then we'll also open this, uh, there's a rinsing gas valve right, right over here on the far end of the retort. And um, by doing this, we allow that heat to be pulled actually through the wood in the retort. So basically uh, when we're heating it through the outside, just through conductivity through the tub of this retort, that's indirect heating. And then when we open the rinsing gas, that hot air is actually traveling through the wood and directly heating the biomass. What drives that heat and pulls it through the system is this gas fan right here. So the basic route of travel for this hot air and gas coming off the biomass, it'll come through the rinsing gas valve, um, through all the wood, it'll pick up the gas coming off the wood in the retort, through the safety valve, and these pipes on all re the retorts after the safety valve end up going to a condenser in the back. That is what helps eliminate a lot of the smoke that would normally be produced when uh, creating biochar. And so we get a lot of the heavier hydrocarbons and what's called wood vinegar out of that and we store those in totes um, down that ramped area over there which Dan will also talk about later. Um, and so then the drier gas ends up circulating back into these gas vans and being sent back into the combustion chamber and continued through that whole system loop. And um, I was saying earlier that initially we start out with the gas fire to, pr to provide heat to get the whole system running. Um, after about, and also depending on how dry the wood is, um, once the retort gets up to about 150 degrees, if the wood is, is dry, then it'll actually produce its, enough gas on its own for us to run the system entirely on its own gas. So the gas coming off the retort that we're releasing to make the biochar ends up perpetuating the system and we don't even have to use any excess energy at all. Typically, we'll run two loads in a day. 
So we'll run, run. We'll start start off with one retort, and then once it has released a good amount of gas, but not a lot, like all of it at least, um, we'll start another retort, and we'll use all, a lot of that gas coming off the first one to start the next one, because we have been producing so much, and during the winter time we are feedstock hasn't been as dry as we optimally would want it to be. Uh, we've been doing a couple things actually. We've been mixing our feedstock so we'll actually load it with like half slab and half um, sticks that end up looking like this. And so how that helps us is basically since that wood is dry it'll start releasing more combustible gas earlier on and then eliminate the time needed to rely on the gasifier to provide heat to run the system. They're all individual retorts, but they're all connected as well, so it's really all one system. And they're all connected in the back behind here through the condenser. So um, we have two gasifiers, as you can see. There's this one, which we call Jerry, and that's Tom over there. They both have gas fans, just like this one you see here. So when you want to pull gas off of a, like, let's say we're running this retort on the far right here, and we want to send some of the gas that it's producing over to this retort on the far left to get it started. We'll just turn the gas fan on over here on Tom and make sure it's being combusted in the, ga in the combustion chamber below the gasifier. And uh, so both of these gasifiers are then running off the same gas. And um, that combusted gas will start heating in the same way that it initially he did uh, that far right retort and we'll open the rinsing gas and start directly heating it right off the bat pretty much. Yes? So a typical operation, do you only have to use this uh, uh, gasifier to get the whole series of si uh, series started? When we light the second um, retort, when we start to get that running, we'll also usually have to get that gasifier started just to get it hot enough in the combustion chamber to actually light, light that uh, wood gas and fully combust it. So for heating the greenhouse and, and the kiln, the heat exchangers are just running yeah. off the exhaust gases out the chimney? Exactly, yeah. So once the heat has uh, been applied to the biomass as much as possible, it'll go into these big green boxes here that are attached to the flues. Those are what the heat exchangers are housed in. And um, you can see these insulated pipes coming out of both the condenser and both the heat exchangers. And there, what that's the, where the heat transfer fluid actually catches that heat and transfers it into our, we have two 10,000 gallon tanks um, on the other side of this wall here. So this, this is the condenser I'm standing on right now. And these are all the, uh, the gas lines or condenser lines as we call them coming from the retorts um, on the other side of the safety valves. And they all combine here and go into our condenser which has a stainless steel pipe coiled inside of it that is circulating as cold of water that we can send through it because um, we circulate the, like the same water through everything and uh, that'll in turn drain out. Uh, we have some lines here that run inside so they don't freeze during the winter time and drain into uh, totes where we collect our wood vinegar. So the gas comes in on this side of the condenser, travels up, everything is sloped so that wherever, wherever gas is condensing, it's all draining back to this condenser and then going back to the totes where we want it. And once the gas goes through this, the condenser this way and then out through this box and distributes to the gas fans. Does it not ever like build up and clog? It does occasionally, and that's uh, actually a procedure that we have at the end of a run. Is uh, we have we have a, what we call a green box down here, and it it's uh, it actually provides an airlock, so it'll drain, um, but it'll also like collect those tars and other things that are produced from wood gas from distilling wood gas. And at the end of every run, we'll go in there and kind of there's usually like a pyramid shaped um, like tar pile and so you just like kind of detach it from the pipe coming down into the airlock and then shovel it out and we have a, di a separate way of uh, storing that material. We poke up in the pipe coming down from the condenser to make sure it's not clogged up with anything as well. A load takes about 12 hours, um, 12 to 13 hours, uh, a double, a double load and a single uh, it's much more efficient to run doubles because it doesn't take that much longer to run two loads than it does to just run a single load. And you get a lot more heat, you get a lot more biochar, 
um, and you're just making your our, our labor here a lot more efficiently used. So why don't you run three? Because um, then we'd be here all night. <laughs> we'd have nothing to do in the morning. <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't be able to unload it either. We'd have to wait like a whole day for it all to cool down to unload it. Using wearing out the machinery <laughs> evenly, do you sort of rotate which one you start with and? Yeah, we do. We usually have one that we run like every day. And then um, we cycle, so Cinderella is, is one we usually run every day. So yeah, sorry, I should introduce you. Disney character. <laughs> yeah. Ariel, Belle, Cinderella, Tom and Jerry. Um, and so yeah, Cinderella will typically be run every day and then we'll cycle between these two. And um, yeah, so after they, they run, we let them cool down overnight. Um, we put IV drips in these little nipples on the top here that you see. and what. What that does is it, it drips water at a very slow rate into the retort so it creates steam and keeps it pressured up so it's not sucking in air and possibly catching on fire. And then hopefully by the morning time we come and it's cool enough for us to unload safely and uh, then it's stored in those bags over there. So you grind it up? We do, yeah. It's basically pulverized by the impeller. It's also sprayed with water before it hits the impeller. Um, so that cools it down and also keeps the dust level down. So we're not losing a lot of our biochar to the air. Because of the little bit of water on these nipples and the spray going in, what's the moisture content by the time? That's, it that's the question that probably be more directed towards John and Bob. We shoot for like 25%. It can go as high as 50. Yeah, yeah basically you need enough moisture that the material is stable. That's a big deal. When when carbon is finished, it's it's kind of volatile, really. I mean, yeah. we we've cooked off the volatile compounds, but it's bone dry. And if you know if you've lit in the backyard grill, it's a kind of a similar thing. So we need the moisture in there to stabilize it. And then our next step of our process, we're adding more moisture when we when we basically charge the pore structure on that char. Yeah. 